Hi there, I'm Mary Poplin, Imagineer Systems Los Angeles-based product specialist, and today I'm going to be showing you how to track hard shots in Mocha using our 3D camera solver. When I say camera solver, what I mean is that Mocha's new camera solver is not a camera tracker. What our camera solver does is it solves for the planes that you normally solve for when you do default tracks inside Mocha and gives you a 3D plane with a camera based on that plane. Camera trackers try to solve for the camera that the plate was shot with. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why this shot is kind We're of gonna troublesome. this shot. Basically what you're going to see is that there's a lot of foreground movement, okay? Foreground movement's traditionally kind of a pain to deal with. We've also got a whip pan motion that's happening in the shot, okay? And we've got a lot of reflection on the ground. We've got shadows from the car as it pulls into the scene. And we've got all this other um, information from the truck passing over the background, okay? We've got this antenna in the foreground. So these sorts of shots are traditionally very, very hard to track. Not made any less difficult by the fact that the shot is about a thousand frames long. Because Mocha is a planar tracker that can traditionally track through blur, we can actually get really nice results with our planar tracker, something that feature trackers and point trackers can't do. And since most 3D camera solves rely on feature trackers and point trackers in order to get good information, this is a chance for Mocha to shine. Because unlike other trackers, like point and feature trackers, Mocha looks for a pattern of pixels moving throughout the scene and tries to hang on to that. Since most camera trackers rely on point and feature data in order to get good information, this gives Mocha an opportunity to really save you time. Now, this shot is from a show called Real Humans, which is a show about humans and androids, and they were nice enough to let us use this footage for our tutorial. Alright, so here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select my X-spline, and I'm going to draw a shape around the wall area that I want to track, because I have to track two planes in order to get a camera solve. I'm also going to track the ground. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that I'm making very large shapes. The reason I'm doing this is because Mocha needs a lot of pixel data to get a rock-solid track. The smaller your shapes, the less accurate you're going to be. Now, I'm going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, and I'm going to crank my minimum pixel values up to about 78. The reason I do this is because I'd like as accurate as a track as possible, or I won't get a very good camera solve. The key to good camera solves is a very accurate track. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just start tracking. And basically both these shapes are going to be tracked. And you get the idea. So let me show you how I actually tracked this. Okay, so let's talk about the ins and outs of tracking the shot. So I made my shape up here, and I've already tracked this shot, but we're going to play through. And you'll notice that I've moved my shape all over the shot as it uh, has been tracking. The reason I've done this is because the shot itself moves, and honestly it doesn't matter what the spline is doing, just so long as the tracking data that moves underneath it gives good information. So it's pretty easy for me to keep this shape out of the way of occlusions, okay? I just do that by drifting it all around. Remember, the shape is a child of the track, not the other way around. Now if I want to check my track, one of the things I turn on are my surface tool. I turn my grid tool on. This surface and grid tool will show me what's going on with my track. So this here is the surface tool. It's a little blue square, okay? This little blue square indicates what would be a corner pin in another program. This grid represents what the track is doing, and the grid moves according to how you align the surface tool. And if you want to know how to turn these windows off, you just click this button here. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up so that you guys don't have to wait on this to play through. And we're going to move on to the floor. Alright, so this ground is a little bit trickier, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to play through so you can see what I've done with my shapes. So what I've done is I've tried to track this foreground, and that's great, it's going really well, up until this car comes in. This car has headlights that are raking across in a reflective way across the ground in a shadow, and it just bulges right into the foreground. Now that kind of gets in my way, so I move my shape into a little L shape over here. And that's all well and good until these guys start to get out of their car and the camera angle changes. And then the truck comes in, and what do I do? I actually end up moving splines up here to the top of the shot. Now you'll notice, even when I have this spline on the ground, that I've added an extra spline to occasionally, when I only have little bits of ground to track, to occasionally add to my tracking data. Technically, that's not correct to do. However, sometimes beggars can't be choosers, and you need to find the best information in your shot. And I move them around as best I can. In this case, I've split the shapes up, 
to get rid of that antenna and the way it's contaminating my track. Alright, you get the idea, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up as well. And then we're going to move on to the camera tracker. But never be afraid to track in unconventional ways if you don't have the data that you need. Okay, so now that that's all tracked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my camera solve tab, and we're going to start to finish this shot. Mocha's camera solver is only available in Mocha AE version 3 and Mocha Pro version 3. So I'm going to select my ground and whip pan layers, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the camera solver and the options in the camera solver itself. So under the camera options, we've got auto, pan tilt zoom, small parallax change, and large parallax change. Let's talk a little bit about what those options mean. So auto camera means that Mocha uses its best guess to try to figure out what kind of camera is going on in the shot. Unless you have a fixed camera, you'll need more than one layer to solve. The pan tilt zoom option is a fixed camera, which means it has no X, Y, or Z camera translation, but it can rotate and zoom a little bit or pan. You only need one layer to solve pan tilt zoom. Small parallax changes essentially mean that you have a camera in the distance looking at objects far away. So the parallax between those two objects is very small. It's pretty self-explanatory. With large parallax change, you have a camera that is closer to the objects, and objects themselves are further apart. That means that the parallax between those two objects will be greater than you would normally have in small parallax change. Focal lengths should be self-explanatory for anybody who knows anything about camera lenses. So at this point, I'm going to choose small parallax change and solve. Now my solve quality is printed down here, and anything above a 70% is usable and considered to be a good track. Alright, so at this point what I can do is I can go ahead and take my nice solve quality and I can export that data to After Effects or any other program. In After Effects I can export my camera data to an After Effects camera with nulls, or in Mocha Pro version 3 I can take my camera data and I can export that to an as an FBX. In this case, we're going to export as After Effects 3D motion data and load up After Effects. So what will happen is that this will load up into After Effects as an After Effects camera and nulls will be at every corner of the surface that I defined and one for the center as well. And let me show you what that looks like right here. So we're going to load up my project and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my project settings match and I'm going to go to Edit, Paste, Mocha, Mask and make sure that I'm on the first frame. Just like pasting any data in Mocha, it's important that our frame rate, our aspect ratio, and our resolution match perfectly the settings that we have in Mocha. So now I've brought in my camera and I'm going to pan through so that you can see what my camera is doing. You can see that all my keyframes are there and I have a visual representation of my camera in After Effects. At the moment, we do not have a visual representation of what the camera is doing in Mocha. Now, you can also see that I have imported my nulls, and they are lining up with the corners of my surface. Now, if I wanted to add a 3D object to the scene, what I would do is I would just click my 3D text in After Effects 6, or in this case, I'll just turn the layer on. And what I've done is a quick and dirty key to sort of show you how it looks in the shot. So let's play through that, or scrub through, and make sure everything's lining up in a way that we deem appropriate. I always use my Mocha tracking data to rotoscope the foreground objects out of this scene as well, and that would give me better results. So now let's see what my comp looks like rendered out. This is obviously sped up, but you can see that my 3D text fits right in the shot, no problem. I can use this to also insert other 3D objects in the scene other than text, such as a Cinema 4D model. So let me talk a little bit about how to do something like that, and then I can composite it back in After Effects. So I'm going to go over to Cinema 4D. Alright, so now all I have to do is go back into Mocha, take my same camera data, and I'm going to export it as an FBX. We can save as a special FBX for Nuke, but in this case we're going to save as a generic FBX that we can export into Cinema 4D. So we'll just save that to the desktop, and then load it right into Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to navigate to my FBX, and we're going to open it up. And I'm going to make sure my settings are correct. Okay, it's also very, very important that just like in After Effects, we make sure our frame rates and aspect ratios and resolution matches. So I'm going to make sure that that is correct 
before I finish my shot. I'm going to click OK. And now I have my camera data and my nulls arranged in 3D space. You can see my nulls as dots there, and you can see my camera. Now, I'm going to go and view through my Mocha camera, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background layer. A background layer is just a card you put in 3D space and project your shot onto. So I'm going to navigate over here to this background layer and create a background. And I need to apply material to this background that is the shot so that I can see what's going on. So I just apply this material and I load in the texture to be my footage. Click open. And now I can start to add 3D objects to my scene and my nulls are right there for me to select. So let me open up a finished shot that I've dropped a 3D model into. And I've added some lights and added a billboard in here that I can render out and put into my comp. So you can see that the motion matches. And you can see that I would be able to start rendering this out. Now, if I wanted to render it out, I would go over to my render settings up here just go to render and this is what my pass would look like. It's a pretty simple pass. I added motion blur. And then we can go to After Effects and drop it right into the shot. Now because I made sure all my settings matched, I can just easily overlay it A over B right into my comp. I can use my same green screen pole that I used and my final shot will look something like this. Now obviously this could benefit from some good old-fashioned Mocha Roto, but in this case I'm just going to deal with the quick and dirty green screen pull. Please forgive the quick and the dirty. If you have any questions, you can go to our Facebook, or you can go to our Twitter at Imagineer System. We have a forum.imagineersystems.com, or we have a contact form if you need product support. Thank you so much for watching. I am Mary Poplin, Imagineer Systems Los Angeles-based product specialist. Have a great day.